Good morning, Holy Spirit, and welcome. Welcome to Pentecost in a pandemic. <laughs> welcome, glory to God. Would you just put that in there? Pentecost in a pandemic. And that's how you're greeting me, and that's how I love to hear you say it. Pentecost in a pandemic. Glory to God. I'm your host, Bishop Carletta Vaughn, and I'm so excited to have you. Hope you have your Bibles because I want to move straight back into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, a lifestyle with the Holy Spirit, moving and flowing in the Holy Spirit as never before. We talked a little bit about discernment, and we're going to kind of move right back into discernment and why discernment is so important in our lives. Why discernment, even emerging out of the pandemic, for those of you that are joining us uh, in years, months, weeks to come, we are currently in something called coronavirus, COVID-19. It is a pandemic that has hit the whole world, and yet it's Pentecost. My God, it's still Pentecost. <laughs> it is still Pentecost. And so now that we are in the pandemic, but we are also in the season of Pentecost. It is time, oh my God, probably past time for us to really engage Holy Spirit. Praise God for us to really uh, know him in a personal way. The forgotten God, Holy Spirit, the one we don't talk about, the one that we don't know much about. And we're going to take this journey, praise God, together so that you will love him, I hope, as much as I do. I hope that you will come to know him as deeply and as fondly as I do. That he will not just be your dance partner in church. That he will not just be your dance partner when you need uh, uh, to, to get your praise on. But he will be your closest, most intimate, most valuable friend. And that's who he is to me. Oh, my God. And I certainly just absolutely love how Holy Spirit just moves us in such a way that we can actually have this intimacy with him. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the gifts of the spirit. Again, if you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter number, glory to God, chapter number 12. And I, I do want you to know that Holy Spirit is waiting on us to, he's waiting on us to be the vessel that he can flow through. He is waiting on us to be the vessel that he can flow through. Uh, I read a scripture the, uh, the other day, 2 Corinthians 5, around 17, that we are ambassadors for Christ, that we are his ambassadors, and that God is making his appeal through us. Mm. Woo, glory to God. That, that, that just amazes me that we would be given diplomatic uh, 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 assignments that we are diplomats of the kingdom of God. I, I don't know if you understand that. That we are the diplomats of the kingdom of God. And that we are now representing our country, our kingdom in a foreign land. Mm. Woo, we, are, we are ambassadors. Woo, glory to God. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors for this kingdom. We are diplomats. Uh, we're not just strangers tarrying and wondering which way to go, but we have been given this high clearance, if you will, that we can move in a foreign land on behalf of another kingdom. We are ambassadors. That's 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And I want you to look at that briefly. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how these gifts, and particularly uh, in the art of negotiation and in the art of making decrees, the, the high skill level of discernment is going to be critical. Mm, hallelujah. Say, yes, God. Hallelujah. And, and so I, I'm, I'm pivoting from this, this idea that we are ambassadors for Christ. Whoo, glory to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. 
Watch this. And uh, and that that as if that were not good enough. And God is pleading through us that God mm, woo, that God is pleading or he is imploring he is making his appeal through us we are ambassadors for Christ an ambassador is a diplomat and an ambassador is immunity as immunity uh, uh, an ambassador moves into places uh, with high clearance with with a status that very few have uh, they operate in negotiations with other nations with other leaders they operate in writing treaties uh, on behalf of their country or their kingdom they sit with kings oh sheba Woo! they sit with high level officials high level officials of government uh, 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 ambassadors. We are ambassadors for Christ. And he is making his appeal through us. He is showing who he is through us. This land, this country, this nation, and I know that, you know, we are in a political moment and season, but I, I can't tell you how much I don't care. <laughs> I really can't tell you. And it's really something that's really odd because I worked in the previous campaign. I worked uh, for uh, the presidential nominee and I, I, I was, I was all in because my job, my assignment was to be a faith based surrogate for the presidential nominee in media. So many of you may have seen me on CNN and MSNBC and Fox and all of those places because I worked for this presidential nominee and I was just in it. But when I tell you that this particular climate has me almost numb uh, because I recognize this ain't my kingdom, this ain't my world. I am an ambassador of Christ, for Christ, not just of Christ, not just designated by Christ, but I am a ambassador, glory to God, for Christ, and that he is making his appeal through us. <laughs> Somebody said it's not odd, it's just the peace in the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, you are so right, friends. I have the peace of the Holy Spirit. And so I began to look at this. I am an ambassador. We are ambassadors. We are, we are brand ambassadors, if you would. Uh, certain companies have certain products and services, and they choose an ambassador to represent their brand. Oh, God, this is so good. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. And so uh, when you look at certain uh, products, you you. Uh, I was looking at that uh, Allstate commercial, Mayhem. Uh, there are other people that represent certain brands, but certainly Mayhem, I mean, he's a brand ambassador. Um, uh, the other one that does whatever it is, he shows up in a restaurant. Uh, he's They recognize him. He's a brand ambassador. Uh, uh, very many uh, stars and icons become brand ambassadors. They represent that brand. Well, our brand, glory to God, is the kingdom of God and the, the, the right to operate in this high level status. The authority to do it and to get the job done is Holy Spirit. Mm, Y'all better hear this. Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit that gave Jesus the authority and the ability and the power to represent the brand. He was the brand representative. And now we are the brand representatives. We are ambassadors for Christ. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? So now he says to us that we need this power, the power of the Holy Spirit. If he is going to make his appeal through us, and he certainly desires to do that, 
then his appeal through us, he's pleading through us. He's reconciling the world back to God, back to himself through us. Then we're going to need to operate in the same power, glory to God, and the same authority, watch this, and the same discernment as Jesus Christ. Now, that's, discernment is so key. Uh, as an ambassador, one of the, the things that you are responsible uh, is negotiating treaties. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, is, it, is, it is imperative uh, because the king of a kingdom cannot get to all of the various nations that are under their authority. So they send ambassadors. Hey, mm. Shabbat. Woo, y'all better hear me today. I'm telling you, I'm going deep. I'm going deep. I'm telling I, I want you to understand why Holy Spirit, glory to God, is so vital and the gift of discernment. Oh, my God. The gift of discernment, which is a revelatory a gift, the discernment of spirit. The discernment of spirit is going to be vital. To you signing the right documents, signing the right treaties, uh, engaging with, with life and culture. Mm, Woo, glory to God. When we are in this culture, when this culture that we have been assigned to represent the brand, to be an ambassador of the kingdom of God for Christ. That God is making his appeal through us. And so it is important, glory to God, that discernment is operating at optimum level. Mm. Woo, shit, ha, nah, nah. I, I'm telling you, this is so critical as we represent our brand. As we are ambassadors in a foreign land for our king. Oh, God. Whoa, God, don't let me run off from this here, right here. I'm telling you, this is powerful. And you've got to understand Holy Spirit's operations in these gifts. You've got to understand and you've got to really fully comprehend how vital you and I are to the brand, to the king, and the representation of the kingdom. Understanding the authority. Understanding, oh, hey, 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 whoo, God, that your voice, your voice carries authority. Your voice carries authority of your kingdom. Understanding that as you decree a thing, that as you make certain statements, that as you communicate to others what the king's heart is, what the king's mind is. Oh, glory. Ha, ha. Yes, God. As, oh, God. Woo. As you understand, oh, my God, how you must carry the brand into the marketplace, how you must carry the brand into the culture, how you must represent your kingdom, how you represent the very voice and the authority of your king, then you will understand and recognize the seriousness of these gifts, particularly discernment of spirit. Mm. Y'all not hearing me? I'm, I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. I can't just prophesy randomly. I can't just give a word randomly. Uh, uh, ta, ta. I, I have to be able to know the weight I carry, my voice. I have to recognize the weight that I carry in my lifestyle. I have to recognize the weight that I carry. I'm not just somebody that don't know somebody that, that ain't got nobody. I am an ambassador for a kingdom and I am operating in a foreign land. And the treaties and the negotiations that I 
that I initiate, that I conclude, that I make happen for my king. They are life changing and long lasting. Oh, you got to know the weight of the Holy Spirit in your life. You've got to know the treasure in this earthen vessel. You've got to understand why the gifts of the spirit are so vital and particularly discernment. Discernment of spirits. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. I want you to understand that there are three levels that you must begin to discern. Three spheres, if you will, that Holy Spirit will help you. It is discernment of spirit, discernment of spirits with an S. So there are realms I want you to be able to operate. So the first realm, the lowest realm of discernment is human or natural. That is the first level of discernment. That is the lowest level of discernment of spirits. The lowest level of discernment of spirit is the human or natural. And so you must be able to understand that this gift is not 100% emphatically about discerning demons or discerning devils. Are you listening to me? So you have got to be able to see that this is a divinely given gift of the Holy Spirit to comprehend and to understand even the human spirit of others. The, 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 the kind of spirit that a person possesses. You've got to understand that, that not everything is a demon or uh, is diabolical. And sometimes we call things wrongly. You know, we, we call things because we're not discerning that human spirit. We're not discerning the natural realms well. Sometimes fear looks like anger. You have to be able to discern that spirit, that it's the spirit of fear. Even though the behavior may be operating in anger, you've got to be able to recognize that. I was sharing with someone the other day. Uh, they 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 admit to overthinking. They admit to double dutching in their own mind, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and they overthink, and sometimes can become critical. And just the word of knowledge dropped in my heart, and I said, "That's fear. That's fear. That's not being smart. That's fear." And you need to confront the spirit of fear. That's not you just being careful. That's not you just being cautious. That's the spirit of fear. And you need to confront that. Now, I'm on the human level. I'm on the natural level. Uh, sometimes offense can manifest as isolation. Sometimes you think, oh, someone would say, well, I am a, a introvert. No, what you really are basically is offended. And because you have not dealt with that, it's a spirit, then it drives you further and further away from human engagement and human relationship. So not everything is a demon that, 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 that you're going to be deserted. We're going to talk about that realm. But the first realm that you have to have to look at is the human or natural realm. Overeating, overeating, uh, overconsumption. It could be not just eating, it could be drinking. Uh, it could be too much television, too much entertainment, too many distractions. All of that, ha you have to be able to identify, okay, why am I doing that? Or why is my child? Or why is my, my mate, my spouse? Why is that happening? That they overeat, they lose weight, and they overeat. Okay, you look at someone that has an addiction to food or an addiction to anything, television, addiction to sex, and you want to call out the spirit of fornication. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe what's operating in that situation is rejection. And so this is the, this is the human area of discernment. Now, I want you to understand, 
Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. But now you have to be able to discern it because now you have got to be able to communicate it. And so you, you, you have to be able to, to really see on this human or natural level. The discernment of spirit. If you are an ambassador, we are ambassadors, and you are sitting at the table and you're negotiating with someone and you don't necessarily have your discernment on, you could misread a person. I can tell you right now that there are so many people that misread people, misread because it's not discernment, it's a guesstimation or it's an assumption or you're trying to recognize it through a natural way where the Holy Spirit will give you, you hear me? you will give you discernment of that spirit because you need to deal with it. You walk into a bank uh, and the person is really, really just going through, going through and just rude, just basically rude. And you have a bad experience and you began to assume that person is being rude to you, you take it personally. So then you begin to react and become rude to them. Now, you forgot all about that you represent the king at the bank. You forgot all about that because now your feelings get hurt because you didn't discern that. You didn't discern that. It could have been a person ready to commit suicide. It could have been a, a person who's in an abusive relationship. That could be a person who didn't sleep all night because they had a sick child. They could be a person that lost a parent before they had to come to work. And so discernment will determine how you deal with people. Mm. Ooh, somebody, somebody better write that down. Discernment will determine how you deal with people. And as an ambassador, you will always be able and responsible for how you deal with people. It could be an individual who just got beat or just or 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 is a brittle diabetic. It could be a medical condition. And so we have to not be so quick to make a estimation or an estimation or an assumption about a person. So here's what I'm telling you, that as an ambassador for the king, as an ambassador representing the kingdom in a foreign land, you have got to be able to discern on the human level. You've got to be able because if not, you will misdeal, you will misdeal with people and you not writing treaties with angels. You're not negotiating with spirit beings in the heavenlies. you got to negotiate with people. And the reason that so many of you do not have good relationships with people is because you have wrongfully discerned them. Ooh. Discernment is so key. It is, it is vital. It is pivotal to how you deal, how you perceive, how you interact with people. And some of you have just not mastered this. And that is why you tend to draw back into isolation because you have poor people skills. And poor people skills will limit you in how the king can make his appeal through you. Are you listening to me? This is why discernment is key. How do you deal with people? That's based on your on the gift of discernment. I tell, I've told some of my people, you need to work on your discernment. Your discernment is off. You need to work on your discernment. You need to work on your discernment because the way you handled that situation was not led by the spirit. You can't operate in your flesh. Leaders, I'm talking to you. We can't operate in our flesh. We can't operate in our anger. We can't get huffy. We can't get puffy. These are God's people. You're negotiating on behalf of the king. And so you have got to learn. Your discernment will determine how you handle people. 
And if the spirit of the Lord is going to make God's appeal through you, you can cut off a serious move of God by mishandling another person. Oh, reshataba yatata. Woo, because God is making his appeal through us. God is not speaking in the skies and the moons and the clouds. He's making his appeal through you and I. And so many believers have great preaching skills, have great singing skills, but poor people skills. Poor people skills. And you've got to work on that because that's who God is after. God is after people. And so he's making his appeal through us. And if you don't know how to discern a spirit on the human level, you're going to mess that up. You're going to mess that negotiation up. You're not going to be able to cut a treaty. You're not going to be able to get what you need. And they're not going to be able to get what they need. God is making his appeal through us. You carry a grudge way too long. You, you hold on to stuff way too long. And you begin to see through the lenses of your offense. And I'm telling you now, discernment sometimes you need to start with yourself. So that's the human, the natural realm or sphere of discernment of spirits. Now, the next realm is the demonic realm. Ooh, shikabaya. Your, the demonic realm. Now, let me just say this because I need, I, need, I need to help you. Not There's not a lot of people that will do well in the first sphere. And so you will not do well in the second sphere or the third. You got to work on this first sphere of human. You got to stop being critical of people, you've got to be able, because that's who God is making his appeal to. You, you, he's not making his appeal to dogs and cats. He's making his appeal through us to people. So discernment, discernment of spirits is very vital to how husbands and wives, children, families, all right? I have two children, but they are both very different. Both very different, very different. Both of them came out of me, but both of them are very, very different. Discernment of spirits helps me to even know what to say to one child and what not to say to the other child. How to discern your, your mate, how to discern the, the relationship that you're in. You should be able to see things. You should be able not to be critical, but to negotiate. Ooh, as leaders, as pastors, we have two or three hundred people in our church or two or three thousand. <laughs> Praise God. You got to discern the spirits of these people. They didn't just get born in your church or in our care. They came with, they came from somewhere. And so discernment of spirit, many of you have a criticalness about yourself. And you see everything through the lenses of critical or criticism, skepticism. You, you need to check that. You need to check that. You need to check that. Oh, God. Yes, God. You need to check that. You do too much talking about God's people. You do too much damage in the spirit world about God's people. You think it's funny. It's not a joke when God's people are broken or hurting. That, that's not. That's what has given rise to emotional illness and mental breakdown. When basically, we're dealing with the next realm, which is the demonic realm. So when I'm discerning of spirit, am I teaching? Are y'all paying attention? Come on here. <laughs> the discernment of spirits. Is going to be critical to your negotiations as an ambassador. I want you to frame this as I am an ambassador. Frame this that I am an ambassador.
ambassador. I am a high ranking diplomat for my kingdom in a foreign land. Oh God. Hata. Oh God. And, and, and I'm telling you, this is going to set you free when you recognize that the spirit of God is making his appeal through you. All right. So you don't want to have a potty mouth. You don't want to have a garbage mouth. You don't want to have a mind that's full of, of everybody's against me. And don't nobody love me. And you don't understand me. Okay. Now when that starts coming at you, discern that. You got to discern it. You have to discern it. Is that coming from the human or is that demonic? Is that what, what realm, what space are you discerning? Everything is not a demon. So you have to be able to discern the spirits behind the operation as an ambassador because you have to negotiate treaties. You have to negotiate with people. You have to, all things are lawful, but not everything is helpful. All things are lawful, but not everything is expedient, nor does it edify. Oh, Woo. Now I'm all I'm always very concerned about those of you that only discern the demonic realm. You skip right over the human realm and you only discern the demonic realm. All right? We we have we have to bring that back in a balance. You have to bring that back in a balance. All right? You're not just gonna always discern. The demonic realm. Now, so we know we have principalities. Ephesians chapter 6. We have powers. Come on. We have ranking spirits in this realm. Second realm. This is the, what we consider the second heaven. So we know that he is the prince of the power of the air. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Because when we go out of here, you've got to understand woo, the kind of weight that you carry. Hallelujah. You can't just skip over the human realm and become a wonder in the spirit realm with God. No, no, no. No, you're not going to mistreat people. You're not going to mistreat leaders and leaders are not going to mistreat people. You have got to be able and some of you need to really, you know, I just, I, I try to cultivate relationships because I know I can see. Amen. I can discern the spirit behind your pain. You know, listen, not all childhood was a good childhood. Some parents were just jokers. Some parents were broken themselves. Some parents didn't want you. They didn't want you. All right. They didn't want to get pregnant. They, 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 the pregnancy was a surprise. The context in which you were conceived could have been something that was a violation of their own human right. Yes. So when parents or people, adults say, you know, your mama didn't want you. You don't, don't, don't get offended by that. You don't know what that meant in the context or in the timeline that it existed. That don't have anything to do with you. That had to do with them. Now, what does happen is that many times there is a, a some abuse. There is, there is some rejection that occurs. Now, you grow up in that context. And then you come to our church <laughs> or you come into our lives. You love God. You love Jesus. But you still have the wounding of the, of the human spirit. And so as leaders, we have to realize when, when people are breaking, what they need is some deliverance. What they need is some deliverance. They need healing. Oh, but I forgot y'all don't cast out devils no more, right? <laughs> what they need is healing. They need deliverance. They need that. They need forgiveness because many of them, because of the way they were treated, carry unforgiveness. And that causes them to rebel. That causes them to rebel against boundaries. That causes them to react act to certain types of or styles of leadership. It's not personal against you. It's the spirit behind what they had to grow up in. So we've got to be able to discern. This is so vital because discernment determines how you work with people. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> hey, yes, God, discernment. So the discernment of spirit 
Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, the gift is not a clash of human personalities. <laughs> Amen. Just because you fall out with your maid or you fall out with a child, you fall, fall out with your, your friend or whatever, doesn't mean y'all have demons. You need to find out what spirit is fighting. Usually it's a human spirit fighting against another human spirit. Very seldom is it in the demonic realm. Very seldom. Woo! So the discerning of spirits is the divine ability to see the presence of and the activity of a spirit that motivates a human being, whether good or bad. <laughs> All right. So the discernment of spirits is the divine ability to see the presence and the activity of a spirit that motivates a human being, whether good or bad. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to help us today. I'm going to help us. I'm going to help you with discernment of spirit. Discernment of spirit. Now remember, you're an ambassador. Remember, God is making his appeal through you. And remember, you can't get huffy. You can't get angry because people disagree with you. Uh, you say, well, I saw, I heard from God. Well, that was what you heard. <laughs> That's what you heard. And we perceive that you may have heard correctly. Now, but it doesn't mean that it's God for me. <laughs> See, we have to be able to negotiate with people. We have to be able to understand that, you know, that the spirit of God may not say the same thing to everybody. You know, uh, the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they heard in their own language. Allow people the space to hear in their own language. To hear the way God speaks to him. Praise God to them. So the discernment of spirit is the divine ability to see the presence and activity of a spirit. Not of demons. Not of demons. But of a spirit. Not of demons. Whether good or bad. It's the divine ability to see the presence and activity of the spirit that motivates a human being whether good or bad. It's not always your ability to see a demon. When we say spirit, love is a spirit. Joy is a spirit. Peace is a spirit. Tranquility is a spirit. So it's not always you seeing a demon when you see a spirit. All right? And, and I want us to understand that because it is so necessary for our discernment to be accurate. Why? Because God is making his appeal through us. Amen? Now, watch this. The revelation of, of what you see is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Now, so the first level, Holy Spirit is speaking to you on the human level. Now, the next level is the demonic. And, and, and discerning in that sphere, discerning that is going to take some training. And, and, and we're going to do this training, praise God. So you say, you say, well, that person is an alcoholic. And some of them, some of these folks are closet alcoholics. But is the spirit alcoholism? Is that a demon? Or is there deeply rooted soul pain there? Now, whew, <laughs> whoo, glory to God. <laughs> Soul pain is serious. Soul ties. There's a lot of things that 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 can happen in a person's life that cause them to be in pain privately. Some things are just bad habits. It's not demons at all. It requires them. It requires discipline. You could be looking at a person who just simply has the lack of discipline. Very seldom are you just gonna off the bat call it a demon, although. Many of you, that's what you do. You call everything that you don't agree with or everything that you don't like a demon. Ah, not necessary. Discern on the human level first. Now, as we begin to move into the demonic realm, as you begin to move into the demonic realm, understanding the ranks, understanding how that realm operates, all right? Understanding that that there is for sure 
a, a demonic realm. There is for sure warfare on that realm. That is what we call the second heaven. We are living in the first that those demonic spirits and rankings, they are in the, in the second heaven. And then, of course, we know that God and all that he is doing in the kingdom is the third heaven. And so I want you to understand how discernment of spirit will work on all three realms. But you have got to be able to master. You've got to be able to master you. In order to move into those spaces. All right. All right. Now I'm, I'm talking really good. I'm talking some, some heavy duty. This is heavy duty pneumatology. <laughs> because I, 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 I'm finding out that discernment is vital. I'm finding out that discernment is vital. And if you will, if you will sit quietly in the Holy Spirit. If you will begin to speak in tongues more. If you begin to pray in the Spirit more. Uh, you will find that your human, your human spirit becomes more sensitive and more accurate as you pray in tongues, as you begin to pray in the spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit, as you begin to pray, as you're praying like that every morning, every night, throughout the day, as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, your spirit, you're edifying your spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, you're edifying your spirit, and the Bible says you speak mystery. Oh, God. <laughs> you want to flow accurately in the discernment of spirit. You must pray in tongues more. You must engage your speaking in tongues more because that is the exercise of your human spirit to become more in tune with the spirit of God. You must not wait to speak in tongues uh, when you get to church and under a heavy anointing. You have to begin to speak in tongues more daily, daily. Pray in the spirit more because when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, when you begin and pray out loud, man, you know, when you in the shower, when you're walking through your house, when you're driving, when you're at the car wash, you know, turn off the radio, turn all that off and begin to speak in tongues more. Because what that does is that builds your spirit, man, and that causes you to become more and more sensitive and more and more accurate in your discernment. This is me all day. This is me every day. This is me all the time. If I'm in the car, you know, I'm sitting at a table getting ready to order at a restaurant. I'm speaking in tongues. It's my second language. I'm going, going to the restroom. I'm praying in tongues. I'm on my way walking. I'm praying in tongues. You've got to pray in the spirit. You've got to pray in tongues more. And if you have not received your prayer tongues, if you've not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of tongues, then just ask. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to receive the fullness of the spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And he's not an evil God. He will not give you a serpent or a snake because you ask for tongues. He will give you the Holy Spirit and you will speak in tongues. And you need these tongues because these tongues, as you pray in the spirit, your, your spirit man is being exercised and you're causing your spirit man to be more alert and you're going to need this particularly as you move into the second and the third realm of heaven as you begin to look at this thing from a larger perspective Oh, you you got to practice every day. You got to pray every day in tongues. You got to speak in tongues every morning. Even before you come in, even before you view Pentecost and the pandemic, start speaking in tongues. And when that happens, you'll begin 
you begin to feel your, your belly muscles tighten up. I'm telling you, because your spirit man is waking up. Your spirit man is becoming alert. Your internal, he can, da, 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 you do that all day, every day for seven days. Your discernment to get so accurate. Oh, and it causes you to become more sensitive. Praise God. And it causes you to speak mysteries. Things will be revealed to you that you are going to be surprised come out of your mouth. Not because you thought it, but because you spoke mysteries in the spirit and at the right time, Holy Spirit revealed it. Remember, you are a diplomat of the kingdom of God. God will never leave you ignorant. He will never leave you where you don't know what to do. He will never leave you. He will never leave you ignorant. He will never leave you without an answer. He will never leave you. No, he will not do that. He will not give you diplomatic clearance and then have you to look stupid. No, sir. The Holy Spirit must be engaged on a daily basis. You have to speak in tongues. You have to pray in tongues. You have to talk in tongues. You have to sing in tongues because you want this whole body of yours to be yielded to the Holy Spirit whenever he wants to speak to you and convey a message through you because he is making his appeal through us. Ooh, so many of you receive the baptism, but you don't speak in tongues enough. You don't speak in tongues enough to be alert in, in discernment. Now, <laughs> Ooh, Jesus really operated in the gift of discernment. He was so accurate. Oh my God. He was so, so, so accurate. It was the, it was the gift of, it was the gift of discernment, discernment of spirit. He, he operated in this with real accuracy. Ooh, he operated in this with such accuracy. And, and this, this is, this is how he won people. This is how he negotiated so well because he was able to hear and discern the spirit behind the thing. He didn't jump to conclusions. You know, he wasn't presumptive. Oh, but he understood. He understood the heart of men. He understood the spirit of men. Are you listening to me? I, I, I'm, I'm going to jump over to a scripture right quick. Praise God. And I want you to see this. I'm in uh, Luke chapter number seven right quick. I want you to see this. How to the Boho shop. Before we get to the demonic realm, I want you to see this. Look at Luke seven. And this is a familiar passage of scripture. This is a familiar passage of scripture. And, and, and many of you will, will recognize this. Now watch this. I want you to see this. Ooh, check out. We got to hurry up because we, we almost, we almost done. Come on, come on. And watch this. So a uh, Pharisee had asked Jesus to come and eat. Y'all know this story in Luke 8 and uh, Luke 7 and 36. 7 of Luke and 36. And the Pharisee asked him to eat. He came in and behold, verse 37, a woman in the city who was a sinner. And she knew that Jesus was at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of oil. Stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And then she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Now I want you to look at this verse 39. Watch this. Now when the Pharisee, first of all, that's a problem, <laughs> right? Who had invited him saw this. He spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him and know that she is a sinner. Okay. And verse 40. Watch this. Circle this. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Now, you, you got to catch this. You, you got to understand. The Zermit was operating. All the time in Jesus. He was always. 
Holy Spirit was all he was. That's why he went away to pray. That's why he would steal away because he was he was he was praying. His discernment had to be accurate. All right. But I need you to see this. I need you to concentrate on what I'm saying to you. So this this woman with the alabaster, you, you see this, this woman with the alabaster oil, a box of oil, y'all. We love the song. We love the story. But I want to focus on the discernment of Jesus. I want to focus on the gift of discernment in Jesus. I want you to focus on the gift of discernment. Not on the oil. Not on the kiss. Not on the box. Not on the woman. I want you to focus on the gift of discernment in Jesus. Listen to this again. Verse 39. Now the Pharisee whose house who spoke, who saw this, the Pharisee that invited him, spoke to himself saying, wait, mm. <laughs> spoke to himself saying, you know how we be talking to ourselves, it's all in our mind. Spoke to himself saying, watch this. This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him and that she is a sinner. Verse 40, and Jesus answered him and said, now the man didn't talk out loud. <laughs> the man did not speak out loud. The man spoke to himself. The man thought this in his own thoughts. But Jesus answered him. Y'all, y'all ain't, y'all, y'all ain't gonna get this. Oh my God. <laughs> you gotta pay attention to this. See, look at the discernment. See how critical this is? Do you see how critical this is? Discernment of spirit. All right? Now, now. In the Pharisee's mind, he already critical. He already thinking, okay, you know, because he probably had invited Jesus on shade anyway, right? And so now this woman busts in, not, not invited, and she busts in and goes through this amazing act of worship. And the shady Pharisee, <laughs> amen, thought to himself. Y'all not going to say this. Woo! Thought to himself that if this guy was really a prophet, <laughs> then he would know that the woman that is worshiping him, kissing his feet, pouring oil on him is a sinner. Right? You know that's how some of the church folk are. Certainly none of y'all, right? <laughs> and Jesus... It didn't say Jesus heard him. It didn't say Jesus heard him. It said Jesus answered him. And said, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, say on teacher. And he goes through this parable of a creditor and those who owe money. That, that's powerful. But I need you to see. <laughs> I need you to pay attention to how vital discernment is. Simon said, Lord, I, I suppose that the one who forgave more and, 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 and Jesus said, you have rightly judged. And then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? He said, I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet. Verse 44 and her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. Since the time I came, you did not anoint my head with oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many. They ain't never talked about sin. Never talked about it. There was no conversation about it. <laughs> he said, but her sins, oh God, which are many. Ooh, look at him negotiating. Look at him getting ready to save this girl. Look at Jesus. He said, but her sins, which are many, are forgiven for she has loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Ain't nobody talked about no sins. Ain't nobody said nothing at this table about no sins. This was all in the Pharisee's mind. 
but the gift of discernment of spirit revealed his thoughts. Jesus was so good at this. Revealed his thought. The man thought it to himself and Jesus answered him and had a whole conversation about what he had discerned. Listen, people, we have got to be able to have discernment. And this wasn't even demonic. This was on the human level. This was on the human level. And because of his discernment, he was able to forgive her sins and make a huge impact in that Pharisee's house. I got to go. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Before he ever got to the cross, before he ever shed one drop of blood, he negotiated a treaty for her salvation because of the gift of discernment. The discernment of spirit is a powerful, powerful gift. Ooh, <laughs> stay with me, folks. This, this is going to get gooder and gooder and gooder. I love you so much. This is Pentecost in a pandemic. This is Bishop Carlena Vaughn. I'm telling you, you have got to learn this so this is so powerful and i want to encourage you as you move throughout these lessons that you would pray in the holy ghost and ask holy spirit glory to god to reveal this to you that when you emerge this pandemic you are going to be led by the spirit of god like never before god bless you have a great day <laughs>